warm welcome to one and all dear friends myself dr rashmi joshi sabalkar assistant professor department of zoology shri rt college of science akola dear friends today this is our third unit of syllabus of bsc first semester 1 and today's topic of my lecture is digestive system of ascaris lubricoides so let's see friends what are the organs or which are the organs of digestion in ascaris lubricoides so friends digestive system the digestive system have a complete alimentary canal from mouth to anus so see friends in the previous uh, phylum we studied that uh, the there is no complete digestive system seen in fasciola hepatica because it is parasite so complete digestive system is not required here but in phylum ascaramenthes the digestive system have a complete alimentary canal from mouth to anus okay it consists of the following organs alimentary canal mouth pharynx intestine and rectum these five organs forms the complete digestive system in ascaris lubricoides now see the diagram on the right side here this is the pencil sketch which is showing the complete digestive system this is the anterior most end where the mouth is situated this is the posterior most end in uh, where the anus or rectum is situated this is the complete tubular structure or gut of the gut or alimentary canal of the ascaris see it is a narrow tubular structure a simple tubular structure showing the digestive system so let's see one by one this in this colorful diagram here see this is the mouth which is triradiate mouth is seen here three lips are present it is followed by pharynx pharynx which is followed by the intestinal tube this intestinal tube then comes into the rectum and then opens outside by the anus so let's see one by one the organs of digestion here see the alimentary canal it consists of mouth a short pharynx or esophagus forming the foregut a long tubular intestine or the midgut and a short rectum or hindgut see the complete alimentary canal from mouth to anus this complete alimentary canal is divided into three parts first one is foregut second is midgut and the third is hindgut so friends in the foregut it shows the presence of mouth pharynx and esophagus these three organs togetherly forms the structure which is called as foregut mouth pharynx and esophagus these three organs togetherly forms the foregut region of the alimentary canal of ascaris the middle tubular region narrow tubular region is the midgut which shows the organ intestine intestine is the middle portion of the Uh, alimentary canal and it forms this form, forms the part that is midgut now the last portion is the hindgut the hindgut consists of the short rectum this rectal region or anus is uh, comes under the third part of the alimentary canal that is hindgut okay now the second organ of digestion is mouth so let's see as already referred to the mouth is a triradiate triradiate and three lips are present triangular opening is present triradiate aperture situated at the anterior tip surrounded by three lips or labia see the mouth is triradiate that's why three lips are present to three lips or labia are present to guard the aperture so this is the triradiate mouth see here three lips are seen so this is the triradiate mouth so today uh, so in this slide we have studied the alimentary canal which consists of three parts of the digestive system foregut midgut and hindgut foregut consists of mouth pharynx and esophagus 
midgut consists of intestine and hindgut consists of rectum now the first part of digestion or alimentary canal is mouth so mouth is dry radiate which is guarded by the by the three lips or labia now the third organ of digestive system is pharynx this is the important part of the digestive system here see the terminal mouth leads into a cylindrical thick walled pharynx the walls of pharynx are thick because these muscular movement helps in the uh, sucking of food and which propels out inside the uh, further uh, alimentary canal so let's see the function here the dry the terminal mouth leads into a cylindrical thick walled pharynx or esophagus which has a posterior swelling called end bulb which has a posterior swelling called the end bulb which is provided with walls here walls are present the pharynx has muscular walls having radial muscle fibers which dilate the lumen see the lumen is triangular as the mouth is dry radiate triangular mouth is present so that triangular portion is followed here and the opening or lumen of the pharynx is also dry radiated or triangular internally it is lined by cuticle internally these dry radiate this dry radiate lumen is uh, is lined with the cuticle at the margin of mouth at the margin of mouth is continued with the cuticle of the body wall the pharynx has three large branching glands the pharynx has three large branching branching gland cells which opens by cuticular duct into the lumen which opens by cuticular duct into the lumen these are in fact pharyngeal or esophageal gland see here the pharyngeal or esophageal gland these glands uh, functions here in the lumen uh, in the pharynx here the cavity of the pharynx has three deep longitudinal grooves lined by cuticle and in the transverse section the lumen appears dry radiate see here the dry radiate lumen is seen dry radiate lumen these are the radial muscles these are the radial muscles all these vertical muscles are seen which are radial muscles then the dry radiate lumen lumen shows the brush like structures which are the connective tissue or marginal fibers these are marginal fibers so the opening and closing of this dry radiate lumen of pharynx is done by the help of these radial muscles and these connective tissue or marginal fibers togetherly contract and relaxes so that the this dry radiate lumen opens and closes opens and closes this type of function Uh, is seen here the cavity of the pharynx has three longitudinal grooves lined by the cuticle and in the transverse section the lumen appears dry radiate connective tissue fibers arise from each of the three internal grooves and go to the cuticle covering of pharynx they maintain the dry radiate shape of the lumen this much constitutes the stomer stomodium or corcut okay uh, up till up to the pharynx the forgut is seen now after forgut the hindgut that means the intestinal structure so the fourth organ of digestion is intestine let's see the structure of intestine this is the fourth organ or the midgut of the alimentary canal of ascaris the pharynx opens posteriorly into a thin walled dorso ventrally flattened intestine or midgut see the transverse section here this is a triangular portion and it is uh, flattened somewhat and it is the intestinal transverse section intestinal transverse section it is formed a single layer of columnar epithelial cells lined externally by a thin layer of cuticle see the outermost membrane it is the cuticle membrane which is internally lined by a thin layer of columnar epithelium these are the columnar epithelium cells this much section of transverse uh, section of this word this much section is highlighted here or um, shown in a maximized form see here zoom form so this is the outermost cuticle these are the small columnar 
epithelial cells, these are the intestinal cells, which shows nucleus at the basal region and at the uppermost or the anterior region, the brush border is seen here. Brush border, intestinal cells, and at the basement, base, uh, basis of these intestinal cells or columnar cells, the nucleus is seen in each and every cell and which is covered outer on the outer side by a cuticle membrane. So the free inner margin of each cell is produced into several finger-like projections, the microvilli, see the brush border or microvilli, finger-like projections which are invented or discovered by Kessel et al. 1961. They form a sort of tightly packed brush border which increases the surface area. The intestine has no muscle layer. Now the last part of the digestive system is the rectum or the hindgut. The intestine is swallowed by the hindgut or rectum which is also flattened or sweatfully. Its wall consists of tall columnar cells and lined internally by cuticle and externally by few muscle fibers. In male, the rectum opens out by cloaca because it receives the ejaculatory duct. But in female, the rectum opens outside by the transverse slit-like aperture, the anus. This is the difference of male and female rectal region. Okay, the anal aperture is guarded by the anterior and posterior lips and is provided with a few spatial dilator muscles running from the rectum to the body wall called as depressor ni. Their contraction from time to time causes the fecal matter to be discharged out. The rectum also has large unicellular rectal glands, three in the female and six in the male. Three, female, three rectal glands are present in female while six rectal glands are seen in male. So let's see the diagram on the right side of the slide right side of this slide. So, see the ascaris ludicolis transverse section through pharynx. This is the triradiate lumen in which uh, these are the uh, muscles here which are the pharyngeal lateral muscles uh, and these are the uh, connective fibers which maintains this triradiate lumen of pharynx and all these contraction of relaxation of pharynx uh, you know, propels the food in the forward direction or into the intestinal region. Now see here the muscle layer, the muscle cells are present. This is dorsal nerve, this is ventral epidermal cord, ventral nerve, this is pseudocele, the hollow cavity or the false cavity which is called as pseudocele. Lateral epidermal cord, lateral nerve, lateral excretory canal, this is the outermost cuticle, this is the epidermis, then dorsal epidermal cord innervation processes. This is all about the transverse section through pharynx region. Now, how the food feeding and digestion takes place into the ascaris. So, let's see the points here. The food of ascaris comprises of blood, tissue excutes, exudes, and partly or fully digested food occurring in the fluid form in the host's gut. This is the all food material which uh, the uh, which uh, the uh, ascaris uh, get uh, in the uh, free form as it is in endoparasite. So it gets the ready-made food from the human beings. The food is sucked by the suctorial action of the pharynx. See, as the pharynx shows the muscular layers, um, he heavy or thick walled muscles are seen. So, those muscles help in the contraction and relaxation which helps in the suctorial action uh, to suck the food. The digestion is completely extracellular in the intestine. The digestion is facilitated by the enzymes like proteases, amylase and lipase secreted by the gland cells of the pharynx. In the pharyngeal structure, as we have seen, some glands are present over there. So, those glands or pharyngeal glands have secretes the enzymes like protease, amylase and lipase which helps in the digestion of food. The digested food is absorbed by the intestinal cell and distributed by pseudo fluid. 
the excess food is stored mainly as glycogen and little fat in the intestinal wall muscles and syncytial epidermis now the intercellular digestion has also been reported to occur in the cells of the intestinal wall as they engulf the small solid particles by phagocytosis the digest and digest them intracellularly the undigested food or defecation is facilitated by the depressor ani muscles which raises the dorsal wall of the rectum and the posterior lip of the anus or cloaca so this is all about the digestive system of ascaris lubricoides i think you all understood very well if there is any difficulty regarding this lecture please contact me in our whatsapp group i will discuss with you i will explain again the same topic okay friends thank you thank you very much